The NBA season has just started. And if you think this game is the same as it was last year, then think again. Just check some of these scores getting posted night after night. The nets are cooking, the sneakers are squeaking, and it's time to find out just what has been causing so much outrageous scoring. The offensive rating over the years has had a pretty steady climb upwards, and we've hit an all-time high with a huge 1.5 point jump over last season. Of course, the skill level across the board continues to get better, but where else can we look to explain why teams have just been binging on their baskets? The first thing we can look at is pace. Teams have been increasing the number of possessions, and when we compare pace numbers, this 4.5 bump is staggering. That equates to, on average, nine more possessions in a game with which to get shots up. What I found interesting was that the three fastest teams in terms of pace are nowhere near the top of the list for offensive rating. So, increasing possessions doesn't mean you get more efficient. Ever since the invention of the game, coaches have tried to get their teams to get out on the break and run. And it made sense, since there's more opportunities to beat the defense down the court and create open, and thereby easier, shots. It looks like this year, more teams finally got the memo, as fast break frequency is up, and the scoreboards have been ringing ever since. Shots early in the shot clock have continued to climb, and it's not just on the break. Teams are starting their offenses sooner and jacking up threes off of all manner of quick pin down screens or pick and rolls out top. More teams have started emulating the Warriors motion offense, which in turn was emulating the Spurs offense, and one staple is setting one or two weak side pin down screens to free up a shooter for the three. What is interesting is despite squeezing off more quick threes, the three-point shooting percentage has gone down slightly since last year. And that is with an uptick in open three-pointers as well. If the open three-point frequency stays at this level, then expect the overall three-point percentage to rise, hence more scoring. Very early two-point shots have also increased, another benefit of the increased pace. However, I would expect teams to improve in their transition defense as the season wears on, and that either the frequency or efficiency or both of quick two-point shots will go down. Another important development this season has been the rule change. No, it's not the 14-second shot clock reset after an offensive rebound. The real effect of this rule tends only to be seen at the end of a close game when a team gets an offensive rebound, which is not very often. But what should occur often is you getting down to an NBA game this season to get in on all the high-paced action. And there's no better way to get tickets to a game than by using the SeatGeek app. It scours the internet for the best prices, grades them for you so you know if you're getting a good deal, and it can even show you the vantage point from the seats. Best of all, you can save 20 bucks off your first purchase if you use my code BBALL. So what are you waiting for? Don't miss Giannis leading the Bucks to the top of the East and the Nuggets and Pelicans shredding the basketball nets in the West while also saving money and getting great deals with SeatGeek. The rule change that has had a direct effect on the rise of scoring is the new emphasis on player freedom. No longer can defenders bump and grind as much as they used to as the referees have been calling this a lot tighter. Naturally, we see a rise in foul calls per 100 possessions and that, in turn, leads to a higher free throw rate. Sure, an extra couple of free throws here or there might not move the needle when looking at the scoring, but the emphasis has simply made defenders less aggressive, hence less effective. The last piece of this puzzle is turnover percentage. This has also gone down this year mainly due to getting up more shots more quickly. What is interesting is that passes per game are way down this year, even though there are a lot more possessions. This is a number we all need to keep our eye on, because part of the joy of watching basketball is the team concept, as the ball gets whipped around until someone finds an open shot. The benefits of less passing are less turnovers, and more shots, but there is a sweet spot where the number of passes yields a high percentage shot and limits the odds of a turnover. To give you an idea of how much passing has gone down, the per-game passing average has plummeted almost 10 a game this year. 
And remember, each game has seen an average increase of 4.5 possessions for each team. The Warriors are usually at the very top of the rankings for passing per game, but this year they dropped to 18th in the league, passing the ball almost 34 times less per game than last year. Jacking up shots just so you don't turn it over is not the way you want to run a team at the NBA level. So, will this surge of scoring sustain itself? Will teams settle down, run less, and be a little bit more patient with the ball? Will they improve their transition defense and communication to limit what has been a fountain of points thus far? If I had to give an answer, I'd say the offensive rating will stay in the vicinity of 110, but I'm not sure they can keep up this pace. But if they do, count on this season as being ground zero for when the game truly changed. Sports fans, make sure to hit the subscribe button and adjust your settings so you can get notified immediately when we drop another great NBA video. Let us know how you feel with a thumbs up and a comment. After all, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You win.